Hey guys, so welcome back to Testify. Today we are doing a part two on giving. Mm -hmm. And last time we left off on seed, I remember yeah, I'm letting y'all know um, um, a famous saying that we have in our church. If it doesn't meet our need, then it must be seed. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about what is seed, what is bread, and just further discussions on what is giving. So we hope you enjoy. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so according to the scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, it states that now he, it says... Now may he who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now, when the scripture talks about seed and we know like back in those days, they, they did a lot of farming. They did a lot of, they, they had a lot of animals and what's not. Mm -hmm. So in this context, in our society and today, we're talking about the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. So like, like I mentioned in um, the last video, we talked about what it meant to be a steward and how um, God, what, what he entrusts us with and, and what's not. And one of the things is money our finances mm -hmm. and the the seed and the bread today is our resources our monetary funds that we get from our jobs but ultimately our um our number one source is god right because he says he gives us the ability mm -hmm. to create wealth a prime example of about what like um a seed would be is something that you would like put into the ground and then it would like reproduce even more afterwards right, right. so what what came to mind when when we talk about seed yes we're talking about monetary um but yes we're talking about monetary gain but what came to mind was actually jesus mm -hmm. um he was actually a seed the scriptures um the scripture compares him to and it says in john 12 2 John 12, 2. Hey, right? John no. chapter 12. John chapter 12, 23 to 26. And it says, But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. And then we look at us. The children of God, we mm. are the fruit that came wow. after that. So, wow. so that's what I that's what I was thinking about. We are the children of God. Jesus died; he was put into the ground to produce more life, to produce more sons of God, wow. to produce children of God and children like him. That ha that's a Holy Spirit moment because that's yeah. a, that's a new revelation. I I never even um, looked at it like, like that. I yeah. never looked at it like that. And I mean, even in when you when you mentioned just now that mm -hmm. um, Jesus was referred to as a seed or could be compared to a seed mm -hmm. in some sense i think about genesis um because you know jesus was he was prophesied from the beginning of yeah the he was yeah from the beginning mm -hmm. um and and even when 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 god was talking to the snake mm -hmm. he had, he literally said the seed of the of the woman shall crush your head yeah so mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, that's, I didn't look at it like that either. that's that's very that's a very interesting way mm-hmm and yeah so and and he his body was broken before us mm -hmm. and um his body was broken before us so that we could have life that's why we take communion because he say we have to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood not literally right but <laughs> like not literally for those who but, think you know that's... yeah but his his body was broken before us and you can imagine if jesus never gave if he never gave and used himself as a seed like mm -hmm. and and gave himself up for us we wouldn't have this life because the scripture says that life is in the blood remember when you were doing studies on that one and because life is in the blood god wanted to share that life with us and cover us with that blood so when we eat of the flesh and when we drink of his blood that's what we receive so how how can we then um with that being that's a very wonderful example actually mm -hmm. so how do you now how do you teach people what is a, what is seed and what is bread and the difference between the two and how to how to how to find out the difference if you don't even know the difference mm -hmm. and you know yeah tell us, tell me. So, okay Enlighten me. <laughs> okay so like like how jesus like how he was compared to us the seed like like i mentioned if if he didn't give that then there would be nothing to give there would be nothing to, there, nothing there would, to gain to, yeah nothing to gain. to gain so when we think about like the widow woman what she had wasn't enough 
it wasn't enough to, to meet her need like at the end during, during during that drought and what's not so because it wasn't enough when she gave it it was multiplied the mm-hmm. same thing with the boy with the fish and the loaves when Jesus fed the 5,000 when he gave that to Jesus it was multiplied mm-hmm. so usually I, I would say that seed is the resource that doesn't meet our need like like the saying say when it doesn't meet my need it must be seed yeah. when I only have when it's not enough yeah when it's not enough so if you only have five dollars left give it to God and then after that he'll hold on that. now you know what what <laughs> give it to God in faith oh yeah it this God is completely me. impossible without yeah. faith it, yeah. it, you may as you're well right. just give your money away and count that a loss mm-hmm. if you're not doing it in faith mm-hmm so yeah just give give to god in faith give it give give whatever you have whatever you have and it does not meet your need give it to him in faith for him to actually multiply it Mm -hmm. and to give and to bring more out of it right and you could only do this through god's grace you could only do that like when you and, and and knowing who he is like hey god i know that this is the last that i have and i'm giving it to you expecting you to do what you said exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask for or think of and I I recognize that this does not meet my needs so I'm giving this to you for you to multiply it and what bread is bread is the the income that we have like after we already paid off our tithes and we did offering bread is the income that we use to meet our daily needs so for you to buy grocery for you to put gas in your car to pay your bills and to do like um, fun activities that's your bread that's what you use so yeah that's what you use so yeah Okay. That's what bread and seed is. That's what I would think. That that's no, not uh, think. That's what I would say. That seed and bread is. That's a yeah. very, very good illustration. Mm-hmm. Um, just pretty much in a nutshell, um, take what you have. Like you know, like you, like you would have mentioned. Like she would have mentioned already. If it doesn't meet your need, I think it's very important to do, to do, to do this with wisdom. So, for example, if you are, if you need five hundred dollars for whatever reason you may need it for. Of course, you know, the first thing you want to do is you want to pray about it, if, if, especially if you don't have it. Um, me, personally, I tend, I tend not to ask people for things, not out of pride or, you know, caring what they may think about me, but more so because I solely, truly, wholeheartedly believe that God is able to provide and meet my needs. And he said that I can ask and I shall receive. If I, if I ask, I can receive. And so... Um, I make it a practice not to ask other people for money um, if I don't have to, and if and be mainly because I know that God is able to provide for me, mm-hmm. and so that's my that's where my faith stands already. And so, for example, if I need or anybody needs five hundred dollars, um, first and foremost, you want to pray and ask God for it. And if you have seed to give, if you have seed to give, you definitely want to give it because. You know, I mean, and and before I even move on, you want to give it in faith, because that's very important to add in faith. Because if you just think you can just take whatever seed you have, five dollars, ten dollars, and you put it in, you know, just because you're expecting to see this great gain from it, without doing it in faith, without wholeheartedly trusting and confessing and believing that God is able to to multiply that, then it's useless. So you want to give in faith. Um, if you do have seed, and why I say that is because you know, I think it's a misconception. People tend to hold on to the little that they have because they don't understand or believe that God is able to multiply. So, of course, if you have seed, you want to be encouraged to give that and give towards the kingdom um, because God is able to multiply that. Mm -hmm. And he's definitely able to meet whatever needs it is that you have. Yeah, and also another thing what you all could do is if you don't have, even if you don't have money, you could believe God for seed and whatever amount you ask for actually sow that so that you could reap. If you ask God for $5, you could um, when when he gives it to you, actually give it back. Give mm-hmm. it back and put it back in the area that you said that you would actually give it in. So yeah. you could believe God for seed. Just say like how you could believe in him for bread. You could believe in him for both. Yeah. The scripture says that my God will meet all of our needs. So it, whether you need seed to sow or bread to eat, God will provide that for you. And that's if that's if you don't have seed and or bread. You wanna and if you trust in God to provide, mm-hmm. you know either or. If you do have it, if you have funds if you have seed bread and and you you kind of don't know what to give and how much to give um i think it's very important for people for some people to 
to ask God because you want to do it in wisdom too. You don't want to just, you don't want to give away all your bread, mm-hmm. you know, thinking yeah. that I see it when, you know, you know, and then at the end of the day, you can't pay your bills and you can't do, you know, things that you need to do, things that are essential for you because you just give and give and give. Mm-hmm. Um, God doesn't want you to do that. Mm-hmm. He wants you to give, you know, of course, and, with, and that's and a with good some, point. Because you, yeah. you, you, I know you have a testimony on, on that, how you used to give just every every single thing yeah. all your gas money all your grocery money <laughs> yeah so I, I i brought i brought that up to say you know just ask god ask him how much of this is seed lord and how much of this is bread how much do you want me to give how much how much of this can i keep for myself to you know to to enjoy Mm-hmm. So that's that's very important. Yeah, because God wants us to enjoy what exactly. our wealth and what's not. Yeah. And yeah, so in a nutshell, um, seed and bread is the resources that God gives us. However, some is made especially for giving and some is meant for to just to meet our personal needs. Right. Whatever your needs may be, getting your hair done, I wanna, that's what you want to do. I want to mention yeah. something, mm-hmm. you know, something something mm-hmm. very important um, because and I always have to disclaim that we live in a very religious society so mm-hmm. you know people tend to I, I just don't want anyone to misconstrue what we're saying you know and think that we're trying to apply it to this religious society that we have going on because I want to say specifically I remember visiting a church in particular and they were saying that in order to receive what I guess a prophecy um, come and give you a seed that is not biblical. That is not biblical. You don't pay for any of the gifts that God freely gives. You don't pay for prophecy. You don't pay for healing. You don't. Pay, you know what I mean? You don't pay for these things. So be very mindful, be very careful, and be very wise about what you are sowing into. Do not, <laughs> please don't pay, don't pay for those things. Jesus died so we could have these things for free. Those things are free, and if you if you come across you know different churches and people who who are expecting to receive funds for these free gifts, you want to be you just want to just I would personally step mm-hmm. back stay and away and there's from that. and there's nothing wrong with so sorry there's nothing wrong with sewing to those um, right there's nothing wrong in like so sewing into a ministry so, yeah if you're led to do so if right they, if they have the option if you want to sow seed you can sow seed but they're not making it mandatory because I know what you're talking about yeah because I I heard a person's testimony about that. They they wanted deliverance from something. That's um, not, you don't pay for deliverance. How do you? How is, they how, they wanted not, to be delivered from whatever it was. Um, generational curse. That's what they said. They uh-huh. wanted to be delivered from a generational curse, and they went to this place and they said they were delivered by it. But the the seed that they had was mandatory. It was a mandatory seed that they had to sow, and that it shouldn't be that way. Um, be led and and what's not and and even out of that you may want to just naturally give because you you may be like oh my gosh like hey thank you so much for yeah that's using totally God different though you to to, 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 to bless me but not to say like to make it mandatory, mandatory for, yeah. for, for, for you like you have to you have to pay me yeah in order that for is this not service at all what we are talking about yeah that's not at all we're talking about we want to be very careful about mm-hmm. seed and talking about yeah. finances and funds especially when it comes to the kingdom mm-hmm. um don't 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 be misled. Don't be deceived. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so moving right along. So we want to talk about the different aspects in um, giving. giving. So the first one um, we want to talk about is giving in time. Giving our time. Giving our time. Giving well, our time. Yes. Giving, giving our time. Mm-hmm. Because money is not the only thing that we give to God. Nope. That's not the only thing I should say that we give back to God Mm -hmm. because, you know, he he gives it to us first. So um, God gives us time. Mm -hmm. He graces us with time. And he says to redeem the time. Yeah. So what do you mean by that? Actually, I nodded my head, but I don't I don't know what you mean. (laughs) No, like like use the time wisely. Oh, because the days are evil. That's Mm -hmm. what the scripture says Mm -hmm. that because these days are evil. So we have to. We want to quote um, specifically from. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and starting at verse 1 where Mm -hmm. it says remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come Mm -hmm. and the years draw near of which you will say I have no pleasure in them Mm -hmm. that's a really good scripture to pull um, mainly because there are so many people young people in particular who think that they could just live their life YOLO Mm -hmm. and just 
you know, live it up, do whatever they want to do. And then when they get to a certain point in their life, a certain age, then they'll give their lives to God. Uh -huh. And I thought about it like that when I was a very, very young. I thought about that. And there was an instance like where I was like, yeah, I give my life to God when I old and crusty and rusty. But God don't want that. God, yeah. just like how you want to be married in your youth and want to be enjo uh, enjoy your children in yeah, your youth and yeah. stuff like that. You have reasons for that because you have strength in your youth. Yeah. And you want to enjoy those things. Why would you want to give God your Yep. Your old crusty time. <laughs> your last, <laughs> your last you leg. Gray, and you can't walk and you need a cane and, and then you need teeth. You can't. What God no. knows. I mean, I'm sure he can still use you, but like, why would you even want to give him that? Yeah, don't do that. He wants your strength. He wants the best part of you because he gave the best part of himself. He gave his heart. He gave Jesus Christ. It's one and only son. One and only. Which many of us could never say. Like, I have a son and I am not certain that I would give <laughs> my one and only stuggle for you know for yeah, the sins of the world my spunkin longin I just don't know if I could I don't I mean you know I'm just saying I'm saying that to say God literally did give his best he gave us his best mm -hmm. and you know that that reminds me of our last episode when I was saying you know I, you know Bohemian say like to say you know I don't I'm not taking that loneliness I'm, I don't want that but I'm supposed to do with that why, why would you want to give me that this? why you want to give what me your this? why you want to give me your time when you old and gray and mm -hmm. You know, yeah, no, let's no. let's give him our strength and our, you know, yeah. our, while we in, in so enthused and yeah. motivated and, and, and like while our brain still like there, like it would, it's literally working because as you get older, a lot of things, you got a lot of changes going on in your body. Yeah, yeah. 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 And just like a, another verse that even ties into this is Ecclesiastes 11, um, nine through ten to say rejoice young man while you are young and let your heart be glad in the days of your youth walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes but know that for all these things god will bring to you judgment it says therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh for childhood and youth are vanity Mm. So just just talking about like verse nine, um, specifically, it it um whatever like because people people like to decide oh they're gonna party and do all like God is saying if you want to do that, yeah do that. All that is vanity. Oh no, and, and even even to add to that, he's like do that. You could be judged for them though. You yeah. can do, and that's the will he's saying. Yeah, that's your will. It is our will. They say he's saying go ahead, yeah, go go <laughs> right, right ahead. Then. <laughs> go right ahead yeah you could you could do these things and and even right here but there will be a judgment and we talked about when we talked about um in our show with when we talked about love the world says to follow your heart it says to follow your heart and in this scripture it says walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes and god will judge you mm -hmm. he will judge you when you wow. walk according to those things because god wants us to walk why our that's, spirit that's a very dangerous thing to do yeah. i think it's very dangerous to have the mindset that you you're gonna just live your life and then give give you know give your life to god when you get a certain age or when you settle down i guess mm -hmm. um that's so dangerous because how do you even know that you're gonna live yeah. to see those that's days? why it says it's vanity it's these dangerous. things are vanity yeah. and, and when you're not living for god when you're under his umbrella you don't have his protection yeah you don't have that that's yeah. not you don't you don't have those things yeah. when you're not living for god and it's even important too for even even christians because you know we're not only speaking to to persons who are mm -hmm. in the world even christians because mm -hmm. we're not just talking to unsaved ones we're talking to christians too it's very important for christians to know how important it is to give your time to god how important it is to serve now especially you know because you are because you are a christian we are commanded to serve mm -hmm. and we should want to serve me in particular um i used to go to a church very good church you know i love my old church still but um i never did anything in that church I never once served God. I used to come, sit down in the balcony mm -hmm. area and just hear the message and go home. I never I never thought about my time being important to where I would, you know, that it was, I didn't think that it was important for me to serve God mm -hmm. until I, you know, until I started at the River Church and now I am like all in there, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I find myself doing a lot of service work for God and it's very fulfilling, you know, for me. But most importantly, um, this is what we supposed to be doing. This is this is this is what we are supposed to be doing for God and you know, as Christians we're gonna be judged too. 
um, based on how we serve God during our time here on earth. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to use our time, especially the best of our time, meaning be being our young young days when we are young. And I know I, I, I'm still young. <laughs> I'm still young. <laughs> I'm still young, but um, we want to, it's very, I, th I think it's very important to use these days to serve God because it's going to count for eternity and then you know the the sooner you get started the more you accrue for yourself in heaven i don't know if people look at it like that too mm -hmm. you know the more you accrue for yourself in heaven the more treasures you get to build up in heaven that's how i look at it yeah and i remember pastor Rodney said that we can't take anything to heaven but he said the one thing that we can well let me rephrase that he said the only thing that we could take to heaven is people mm -hmm. we can't take we can't take money Souls, we can't yeah. take riches we yeah. can't we can't take clothes but we could take people that's yeah. the only people we could actually influence and so that they could come with us we lead people to christ we make them disciples wow. and then they come with us and not there <laughs> um even even too the, the scripture says too that only what's done for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. So everything else is just like I mean, yeah, it's important some of some of it is important, but like the book of Ecclesiastes say it's just vanity because it's gonna perish. Deeper. I think that's I think that's why he, he describes Solomon describes it as, uh, describes it as vanity mm -hmm. because it's because he's saying it's not it doesn't it won't it will not matter. Mm -hmm. It At will the not end matter. Of the day, yeah. It it won't it won't even mm -hmm. it'll just yeah. It's just gonna be gone, like and I love the book of, of the book of Ecclesiastes for that. It's just so, so yeah. real to me. Yeah. I, I'm like this. This really helps me to get my mind focused on eternity. Mm -hmm. That's when I read the book of Ecclesiastes, and I've read it a few times. It really gets me eternity driven, and just mm -hmm. it just reminds me and puts me back in that place that you know all of this is gonna be one day. It's just gonna be washed away, mm -hmm. and so I think that's that's one of the reasons why it's very important to uh, to use our time. For service to the Lord. Another aspect about time is singleness. Mm -hmm. um, many people despise this time and they see it as a place just to endure and to suffer. Sis, <laughs> I used to hate being single. I used to hate being single. I, I don't know why. I just felt like, I, I don't know why I used to feel like, you know, if I wasn't with someone that I was just, I don't know. I just, I guess I used to feel like I would be so bored and I wouldn't have anything to do and you know, I, I even remember be, just before I know the Lord now, um, in one of my times being single, I thought that it was wise for me to just go on dates. Like, I would just go out for the sake of going Jamea, out. You got dates? I, I just used to just go. And I would just accept any date. Like, I didn't care who it was. I just wanted to be out and having, the, you know, having a good time. I wanted to be out. <laughs> That's a B. <laughs> That's a B. Yeah, so I just wanted to just, I just didn't want to be bored. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. Well, I didn't know, I didn't know God. And I just always, I just felt like I just always needed to have someone to be with. Yeah. And I just hated being single. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I, I never went all the way on my dates now. Don't, don't yeah. think of me like that. Yeah. But I just wanted to be, I just would enjoy other people's company yeah or even if it wasn't a date i i needed to be out with my friends i just needed something to fill that time that i thought i you know yeah yeah so yeah and this but the scripture says it different though this isn't a time for us to endure this is a time for us to to seek god and want exactly what we have because yeah. we need to, we're not tied down to a man or in, in vice versa you're not yeah. tied down to a woman and a family but you um you just solely have a heart for god and just mm -hmm. willing to do whatever he wants and the scripture actually says that we are happier when we are single mm -hmm. so just quoting from um first corinthians um 7 39 through 40 and i was very surprised when i saw this um, it says a wife is bound by a law as long as her husband lives but if her husband dies she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord but she is happier if she remains as she is according to my judgment this is what Paul is saying mm -hmm. and I think also the spirit of God and I think also okay never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so yeah basically Paul is just saying that 
you're, you're happier if you you when you when you single and yeah. he, he he says that because we don't have to toil about and have our mind focused on the world and like what if what is our family gonna eat what are they gonna drink what mm-hmm. the clothes that they're gonna put on so we don't have to really think about those things and yeah. even for me like i may go a whole day without eating and just eat one meal but like let's say i had a whole family then i have to wake up and i have to cook breakfast lunch and dinner that's so and true find dessert too I oh yeah i now. can tell you because <laughs> even 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 with my son yeah you know i can't just consider myself yeah if even even i mean literally in everything and anything i have to do um i always have to consider him and sometimes that's just I, uh, yeah. so you have to make sacrifices yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah it just it just be a little i mean it's not the worst thing in the world but yeah. sometimes it could be a little bit of an inconvenience like yeah. i can see where if had it just been me yeah my, just me myself and i where it would have been much easier for me to yeah yep and um finally another point that we would like to touch on as it relates to giving is our talents our gifts and what's not and even in our everyday life mm-hmm. um and as it relates to to these things i said in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path and as it relates to time i have a i have a really good testimony like as it relates to that um i remember there was um one point where like school was really really hectic like we was getting down to like like you know the last few days and you have different things do and and what's not and I had like my math labs to do. If you go to UB, you know how them things is. You know how those stuff is. And um, it's really, it was really, really like tough during that time to like complete it. So basically, um, I had an opportunity whether or not I was gonna go to church or whether or not I was gonna stay home and complete my labs. Mm-hmm. And what I did with my time was like, God, I was looking, I was like, I ain't come to church. I ain't come to prayer meeting. So, and prayer meeting don't be short. <laughs> and so the whole thing shut down by the time I had reached home. And I didn't have time to do it. And then later on, and I, I prayed to God. I was like, God, I was like, yes, I went to church and stuff like that. I would really appreciate it for you to open this thing back up for me to do. And he did. He ended up doing that. Oh, you mean it's like a <laughs> yeah. online yeah. thing and that it closes mind. at a certain time. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's basically what it was. And so... Um, later on during the week, I was waiting and waiting and seeing like, oh, to see if this was going to open back up and God actually allowed it to happen and they extended it and I was able to complete my math labs and I was able to pass that course successfully. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I good in maths, but I passed it. <laughs> but yeah, so I was able to, to, to move on and, and what's not. So I was, I was very happy that God really did that and I, I reaped in another area. Mm. So yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And just to move on um, about our talents and, and our gifts, sewing, sewing those things, giving in those areas. Like for me, I, I sing in the, um, I, I sing with worship. I help lead in worship. And this young lady, she greets everybody who comes to church. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the river. <laughs> okay. And the scripture says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And that's Proverbs 3 and, three and 6. And it says in Colossians 3 and 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily. And heartily meaning put your best effort forth, right? As to the Lord and not to men. Mm -hmm. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Mm. So with that being said, it's like with with our talents and stuff like that, we could use them to honor God with. So like like how I sing, I do that in um in church and what's not. And even um just to add to that, um in even in like if persons who, who are in high school and and even if you're in, in university, how I look at this as well is when you give in your assignments, because we are called to, to be excellent, mm-hmm. but we are called to do everything for God and to serve people. Even in that instance, like for me, when I give in my assignments, I always try to do it out of a spirit of excellence and not just Laziness. slam bam, thank you, ma'am, and just just giving it to them and stuff like yeah. that. Because I, because yeah. the scripture says, you know, basically in a nutshell, give do it as if you're doing it for the Lord. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if I was to like procrastinate and hand in some homework late and sloppy, you have to think. You have to think. What if I was giving this to God? No, Would he accept this. I know, but and I, I think about that and I yeah. be like, oh my gosh, I feel like God ain't even gonna accept this drink. Yeah. I, I just be thinking like this, this, this. No, it's, this is not top quality. Yeah, and stuff like that. And like I give it to the teacher because like I need the grade. But he it's, doesn't. He doesn't. And that's a, that's a, yeah, that's the I thing about it. I, he doesn't ask for per- perfection because you know yeah. we're not. We're not, I mean, in our own ability, we're not perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but he does require us to be excellent, which means do it to the best of your ability. Mm-hmm. You know, the best way you know how to do it, you better do it. And that's not just when it comes to service. That's when it comes to everything else. Mm-hmm. So, And I, I really, I, I honestly, I don't like, I don't even like going to school because it's like, if I do this, um, I don't like going to school late. That's what I meant to say, because mm-hmm. it's like, I, I, I have to do everything out of a spirit of excellence. Yeah. I have to look at this like, hey, I ain't just showing up because because God's my teacher. Yeah. He's gonna make sure that I understand when I get in the into mm-hmm. the classroom. So I have to make sure that I like I doing everything according to his will so that I can receive the best and so that's just my encouragement to you. So like if you may be looking at your teacher like this this just my teacher. No, you doing this for God. This is your service to God. This is yeah. how you or honor even, him in or this. even in, in another way if you um if even you're, if you're working. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you're working, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of people tend to think that, you know, if it's if it's outside a church and it's not, it's mm-hmm. not necessarily for God. You don't necessarily have to care, but that's not what the scripture says, and that's not how He wants us to be. Um, so if you're working and you know if you're in a position where you are inferior or and you have superiors, meaning line staff guys, not yeah, <laughs> um, you have superiors, so you have your managers, supervisors, um, you are to to act accordingly and, and submit to what they sub- t- right mm-hmm. because that's what God requires and he wants you to to not only that but just put your best foot forward so if you're if you especially customer service mm-hmm. customer service in this country I don't know anyway mm, customer service yeah um if, if if you're working in customer service you're not just serving people you're not just serving strangers serving guests you want to do it to the best of your ability mm-hmm. you want to serve as if you serve them as if as if God is watching, mm-hmm. would He be pleased by the way that I'm treating His people? Yeah. So even even to to add to that, like a lot of people, they like good service. Now mm-hmm. that you mentioned that, yeah. a lot of people they they really do like really great service, and like just think about your life. How do you serve God? You want this good service, and like like when persons like when you go to a restaurant, you don't get that top of the line stuff but how how are you how are you serving god like are you serving him out of a spirit of excellence am i serving him out of us that's a really a, a good spirit way of to look at it mm-hmm. because even you know and that's motivation for me even um mm-hmm. because i you know in your daily routine of doing things you could te- it i mean it's only it's sometimes it just happens so where you just get tired and bored and it's just come everything becomes repetitive um in doing what you do so you kind of lose your motivation and you just want to be lazy about it but you i think this is a very good scripture to keep in mind um that's colossians chapter 3 verse 23 verse 23 which she would have quoted already um do it as if you're doing it unto god Mm -hmm. do it as if you're doing it unto god um whatever it is you're doing when you go to work you go to school, whatever it is, the people that you have to speak to, the people that you serve, the people that you have to answer to, you know, just do it as if you give, give, give your best effort and ability towards whatever it is you're doing as if you're giving it unto the Lord. And evaluate yourself. If it's, if it's not top quality service and not top quality work, ask yourself, would God accept this? Would he accept this? No, he would not. Why would you give him, why would you want to give him the worst? Why would you want to give him something that you did not, you know, put your best foot forward to, towards doing mm-hmm. and so that's that's just how we ought to, we ought to look at our everyday life because mm-hmm. you know like I mentioned earlier some people think that if it's outside of the church it doesn't count no it, everything it, counts your entire life your entire life that's why I think that's why he said I think that's even why he said that mm-hmm. because he doesn't want us to Holy Spirit moment <laughs> light bulb light bulb please <laughs> light bulb light bulb <laughs> <laughs> light bulb. Um, I had so much fun saying light bulb just now. I just totally forgot what I was gonna say. Wow, no more light bulb. I literally forgot what I was gonna say. I got it back. Light bulb. <laughs> Holy Spirit <laughs> moment. I think that way of thinking is very is so, is so religious, and I think that's why God wants us to put our best foot forward in everything that we do, and not just when it comes to serving 
specifically in church in everything we do because when you get that mindset that you know only when I get in these four walls am I to act accordingly and you know serve with the utmost strength and 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 good service and stuff like that I think he doesn't he doesn't want us to think that way because he does not want us to get religious because the church isn't at the building no it's not we we don't dwell like we're not the four walls yeah so whatever the love and the gifts that God has given he us he wants, wants us to, to perform be that way everywhere all the time. no yes. no hypocrisy openness transparency yeah. he wants that that otherwise you would be that is religion yeah that would be religion thinking yeah. that you could only you know and we have people like that on sunday mornings they are you know just the best kinds of people they're so nice and they you know and then when they get no i wouldn't even say get home by the time they hit the parking lot they're completely different they're mm -hmm. not they're not giving you the best of them they you know mm -hmm. and 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 um just um um, and even if, and this is actually a work of the Holy Spirit, you can mm -hmm. only ask Him to really help you to you, to to you. Could, you'll have to ask the Holy Spirit to to help you to be able to stop procrastinating, to yeah. actually to love people and to serve them and to give God yeah everything. And as it relates to that, um, I just want to talk about this in Genesis when Cain and Abel when they presented their sacrifices to God. Mm -hmm. um, after Abel gave his, God received that because it was it was good. It was it was his best. It was the first. It was the first lamb without blemish, without spot. It was something perfect, and he received that. But when Cain presented his offering, when he presented his offering, God didn't accept it, and God was like, God saw that he was angry. And it's Genesis four and six. It says, "So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry?" And why has your countenance fallen? Meaning like his countenance mean his facial expression. Mm -hmm. Why why was he so angry? And he says, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and it has a desire for you, but you should rule over it. So I say this to say this when God says, Will will, will you not will it not be accepted if you do well? So you have not you have another opportunity, like now that you notice information and even if you fail, like you could try again, you could mm -hmm. get up and you could try again it's only by the work of the holy spirit for you to to stop procrastinating and to do your best unto god yeah so. i want to talk about for for a quick moment i want um because you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. um about giving gifts and talents and uh -huh. we kind of got into more so school and work yeah. and giving your best effort in mm -hmm. those areas um but how important is it to give the ta to give back to the lord the talents that he's given you because i know specifically um like speaking about talents and gifts like dancing and I know you touched a little bit on singing and and how you serve, you know, mm -hmm. with your with your singing, the the gift that God has given you. Um, how you know how important is it for us to give back our gifts to God? Like, I mean, I, me, I, yeah. Tell me, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> okay, well, it's very important because we're one body, mm -hmm. as the scripture says, we're one body with many members with different with different abilities with different. Um, backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and what's not and with that being said it's like God has given whatever God has put in put into me he's given that for me to help the entire body function mm -hmm. so if i don't perform my ability properly it won't at, um, function as as best as possible so imagine this with your body imagine if you didn't have legs you would still be able to move but not as effectively mm -hmm. rather if i have my legs and they are cooperating with the brain with the head and saying yes let's let's move this way let's yeah. try to move this way and and you're actually doing that it helps with the process um the um that god says he wants to build and yeah. it's his kingdom so when you perform your duties when you perform your gifts and your talents when you give those things to god and he helps it to build up his kingdom okay that's yeah mm -hmm. i really wanted to, to touch on that because i know that there are a lot of persons who sit on their talents yeah and they die before they even get to you know to use, to, them. To use them there are so many things that god has blessed us with um He's given us so much ability and, and willpower to do mm -hmm. so, so many things. I mean, I could go on and on and on about, you know, t different talents and, and, and gifts that he's given us. And me specifically, I think that one of my gifts is being hospitable and, and being um, patient, I think, with people. And, and at first, I, I never really looked at it as a gift, but it is a gift. Mm -hmm. It is a gift because, you know, it helps me to stand out. And I when I when I think of myself in a crowd and you know how how a lot of persons can be sometimes um that they don't necessarily have the same gifts that i have mm -hmm. and so if 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 it's something that god has given you that sets you apart use it and use it for his glory mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, and you will be rewarded for it because yeah. he says it right now, like, like we mentioned in Colossians 3 and 23, whatever mm-hmm. you do, you will receive that back. You yeah. will receive whatever you are doing unto yeah. the Lord. So, so basically, yeah. um, that pretty much sums up what we have for today. This is... um. Giving uh, part two. Our, mm-hmm. our part two for giving because mm-hmm. there's so much that you can give. There's so many things that you can give. Um, and, you know, apart from money, it's not about money all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you can give. You can give um, finances, but you can also give your time. You can give your talents, your gifts, your abilities. And you just want to make sure that you're all whatever it is that you're giving especially when it's unto the lord you that you are giving your best Mm -hmm. put your best foot forward at all times because that is what god requires of us Mm -hmm. he requires us to give our best and to give whatever we're giving to um men to you know view it as if we are giving it to him because ultimately that's what it is we are giving unto the lord and so the reason why you want to put your best foot forward is because you can't give your scraps to god no he doesn't want them. And even and even just to add to that just a little bit, um, God, God um, on, on the day of judgment, Jesus Jesus actually said, people will come up to him and say, Lord, Lord, when, when I was hungry, he said, when I was hungry, you did not feed me. That's yeah. what he said. So yeah. it, it it's like we're not doing things. When, when we help the poor, we ain't doing them for us. We doing oh, them for yeah. him. Yeah. When we was hungry, we didn't feed him. We when, when he was naked, we didn't clothe him. That's, That's what he yeah. says to us. He mm-hmm. says that we didn't do this to him. Yeah. So it's just recognizing that everything we, that do, we do is, is for him. Absolutely. And that's, Mm-hmm. pretty much in a nutshell how we are to see it <laughs> yeah that's how he expects us to see it and so we want to make sure that that's how we're doing it mm-hmm. and so um we just want to invite any anyone who's watching this video if you do not know the lord we definitely want to invite you into prayer with us um and we just want you to pray this prayer with us repeat after what Tani is going to say <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and just receive god today um today is the day of salvation um mm-hmm. you don't want to wait you don't want to wait because this um, time is not ours as we mentioned it's not, yeah, ours. It's not um, ours and and for those of you who do know the lord and you, you would have gotten a fresh revelation of of giving and how how to give and especially given to the lord um we just want to pray with you so that god would you know help to strengthen you and and thank him for renewing your mind to the truth and just you know for him to give you the ability to give in faith mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so Tania if you could please play, pray for our unbelievers Heavenly Father God I, we thank you for this day and for those of you who, are, who have actually agreed to giving their life to Christ today right now I just want you to repeat after me and just say this dear Lord Jesus I recognize that I am a sinner please forgive me God for my sins and I now receive your salvation. Jesus, you said that if we believe in our hearts and we speak out by faith, God, that you are Lord and Savior and that you were risen from the dead, we shall be saved. So as they confess this to you, God, we know that they are saved today, God. And you could just repeat this after me. I am saved and I am forgiven. And thank you, God, for saving me. And for and, and God, we, I would like to further thank you, God, for this message about giving, God. And I pray that, God, your people, they would begin to use this, God, and that this 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 would be wisdom to them, God, and that they would begin to apply this in their life, God, and begin to give to you in every area of their lives, God. And they would, they would sow their seed as they ask you for it, God, and they would use their bread wisely, Jesus. And we thank you for all these things in your name. And we thank you that you provide for for us Jesus we thank you for all these things amen amen <laughs> that was so hard now was it <laughs> I set you up though I lie I set you up sorry I said I set up <laughs> I pray next time I put you in the spotting yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so we would just like to send our warm invite okay hold on cut warm a woman invite. A woman invite. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we would just like to take this opportunity to invite you out to church with us. We have church service every Sunday at 10 a.m. in the Black Legends Hall on Prince Charles. Mm-hmm. We also have prayer meeting every Monday at 7 p.m. at the Eastwood Park. Mm-hmm. Bible studies every Wednesday at 7 p.m on Eastwood Park as well. And if you are looking for a good church, a good team to fellowship with, just come out. Mm-hmm. Come, come on out. <laughs> And if you attend the University of the Bahamas, we just started a new club. It's called Life for Real. And if you are interested in um, in 
checking that out you can you can do so we have meetings on fridays and if you would like to join you can just comment down below um to join and don't forget to like comment so, and subscribe to our youtube channel and like us on facebook and just keep up to date with the things that we're doing so thank you so much for watching Bye. see you on next episode yep.